Carvana has adopted a poison pill, but the real question is, what the heck does that mean? Last year, news broke that Carvana creditors had entered an agreement stating that they would work in the best interest of the company, not of themselves, moving forward if a bankruptcy proceeding were to occur with Carvana. Now, this was a big deal because it confirmed what many people were already thinking and concerned about, which is the idea of Carvana filing for bankruptcy. And this agreement signed by creditors pretty much solidified the fact that bankruptcy discussions are certainly being had behind closed doors. This agreement has a three month expiration date, so theoretically, if Carvana is going to file for bankruptcy, more than likely it will happen within the next two months. The issue that Carvana is experiencing is that they are billions of dollars in debt, and not only are their profit margins too small to allow for Carvana to climb out of this hole that they're in, but margins on vehicles are actually getting smaller and smaller by the day as car prices are crashing even more. So to say that things look bleak for Carvana would probably be an understatement. But it does seem as though this week, Carvana has made some positive strides. And this comes in the form of selling off billions of dollars in debt, as well as enacting what is called a poison pill. This week, it was announced that Carvana has sold $4 billion worth of debt in auto loans. Ally Bank and Ally Financial are going to be purchasing the loans from Carvana, which will not only release Carvana from a huge liability, but it will also give Carvana a cash infusion that they desperately need. Now, the idea of Carvana selling off auto loan debt isn't a new thing for the company. In fact, this has been a model that Carvana has been using for years. I actually made a video about Carvana about a year ago, and in that video, I described Carvana as a loan origination company disguised as a used car dealership, and I think that at the time that was a really accurate way to describe Carvana as a whole. Carvana has not historically made all of their money from cars. Instead, it's from cars and loans associated with them. And during the pandemic, Carvana would originate these loans that people would take out whenever they bought a car, and then Carvana would sell them to other lenders. But within the last year, Carvana has started holding on to more and more of these loans because they were a large revenue generator. But as the economy has continued to decline, and as repossessions and interest rates continue to rise, the game of auto loans is becoming more of a risky business for Carvana to be a part of. And risk aside, Carvana is in desperate need of cash, so selling off $4 billion worth of auto loans is really like killing two birds with one stone. Not only are they getting rid of some massive liabilities, but they're also getting some cash that they desperately need. But what about this poison pill? And before we dive into that, I do want to let you guys know that my course, The Car Sharing Masterclass, only has a couple of days left on its New Year's sale, and if you use the code NEW year 200, you can get 40% off the entire course. This sale is valid until January 22nd, and it is the cheapest that this course will ever be again, because later this year, we're going to be releasing the second iteration of the Car Sharing Masterclass, but I am happy to let you know that all current course members will gain free access into this new iteration once it's released. So if you want full access to this new iteration at the cheapest price possible, then use the code NEW year 200 to get your 40% off. You can check out the link down in the description below. Now, a poison pill is a strategy used by a company to prevent investors or outsiders from buying up large amounts of a company's stock and potentially taking over a large share in a company. This is very frequently referred to as a way to prevent a hostile takeover. And you may remember this term being thrown around last year whenever Elon Musk initially announced that he would be purchasing Twitter back in April of 2022. So typically, whenever it comes to publicly traded companies, a person could theoretically go in and buy 10, 20, 30 percent of that company by simply accumulating shares on the open market. Now, of course, this is unattainable for the vast majority of us out there, but for the Warren Buffetts, Elon Musk, Carl Icons of the world, it is entirely possible to become a 10, 20, 30 percent shareholder of a company by simply buying stocks on the open market. But whenever a poison pill is enacted, this takes the ability to do this away. And instead of being able to accumulate this percentage of shares by simply buying stock, you would have to go to the board directly and engage in negotiations. Not only that, but it also puts caps as to how much a single person or entity can own. And typically this is capped at about 10 to 20%. And so nobody who is entering and buying shares can own more than 10 to 20%. And anybody that currently owns more than 10 to 20% of that company will actually have their shares diluted looted, and this is typically done by offering other shareholders or other board members the chance to buy more shares at a discounted price. This in turn dilutes the shareholders of some of the more majority holders. 
Again, this is typically enacted as a way to prevent a company from simply being taken over by somebody with a lot of money. In the case of Carvana, they didn't enact a normal everyday poison pill. They went a very targeted and specific route and they enacted a type of poison pill that's designed to protect your net operating losses for the purpose of tax deductions. This type of poison pill is primarily done to protect net operating losses, also known as NOLs, which I'm gonna refer to this as NOLs moving forward for the sake of simplicity. I don't know if people actually call it that, but I'm going to in this video. The null poison pill is different than a regular poison pill because while a traditional poison pill, like what we saw in the case of Twitter, a company will not allow for shareholders to own more than 10 to 20% of the company, a null poison pill brings that trigger point much lower to 4.9 to 5%. This means that while a null poison pill is in effect, it does not allow for any single shareholder or entity to own more than 5% of that company. And if somebody already owns more than 5% of the company at the time that the poison pill is enacted, then their shares will be diluted until they reach that 5% threshold. This null poison pill will stay into effect for three years, which means that shareholders cannot accumulate more than 5% of the company for at least three years. And these types of poison pills are implemented almost solely for tax reasons for the purpose of preserving tax deductions. Now in really simplified terms, this poison pill is taken in order to not trigger the IRS code section 382, which basically says that if a company is acquired, it limits the amount of operating losses that can be claimed on future tax returns. And given the fact that Carvana has had steep, steep losses over the years. This would be a substantial amount in deductions that would be at risk of being taken away if Carvana was to be acquired and if Section 382 was to be triggered. So in order to preserve future tax deductions, this poison pill has been enacted. Now in preparation for this video, I did a lot of research about poison pills, this specific null poison pill and the impact that this has on companies, as well as the cause and effect that implementing this type of poison pill can have long-term. And the most informative source by far was a dissertation written by a University of Tennessee PhD student, and I will include a link to this down below. And she examined the relationship between company performance, outlook, and the use of NOL poison pills. And this study found that companies that have used this type of poison pill actually saw an increase in revenue in the following years. And that more often than not, the companies that use this poison pill also use their net operating losses for tax purposes within the first few years following the poison pill being taken. So basically companies that enact this type of poison pill typically do see financial improvement in the following years. Now this of course does not mean that Carvana is in the clear financially because that is only almost certainly not the case. But what it could mean is that maybe Carvana does in fact have a game plan on how they're going to move forward and how they're gonna get out of the hole that they're in. But only time will tell. So again, in summary, Carvana has sold $4 billion worth of debt to Allied Bank and they have enacted a poison pill which prevents shareholders from owning more than 5% of Carvana. This is in an effort to preserve future tax deductions. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.